This is a much anticipated testimony, and it's no surprise that the room is packed full. Many of the young people here participated in the NSAS protest, and almost throughout these proceedings, they freely expressed their views about the accounts given by the Lagos State Head of Service, Hakim Murio Kola. Uh, in the morning of the 20th, and this led in evidence by the lead counsel to the government, senior advocate of Nigeria, Abiodun Wunikoko. The head of service starts with a narration of when the NSAS protest commenced the interventions by the government, and eventually the hijack of the protest by those he described as guerrilla protesters. These were the events that people who had infiltrated the noble NSAS protest started to perpetuate on, at the scene of the Lekito Plaza. Uh, I'm sure you would agree that this will be a major cause of concern for any parent, any leader or administrator, and particularly the governor of Lagos. Using slides and visuals, the witness testified about the events of the night of October 20, 2020, and how the government came to know about the presence of the military at the Lekki toll gates. We received a phone call from a, an Ikoi resident on the Queen's Drive side of Ikoi, reporting gunshots, sporadic gunshots. What we thought was that maybe there was a robbery incident or some security incident around the, that resident or that neighborhood until subsequent calls reporting same but that second person confirmed that it was from the toll plaza known as TP1. This led us to call the commissioner of police, Mr. Hakim Odumosu, who called us about two, three minutes after to, tell, to inform the incident command that it was not men of the Nigerian police force and that the stand down order which is the instruction to extend the curfew to 9 p.m., was fully, that the police were in full compliance of same. Based on live broadcasts, or supposed live broadcasts, uh, and um, comments, they said it was men of the Nigerian army in the comments. This led Mr. Governor to call at the time general, a gentleman called General Indagi. General Indagi informed the governor that it was definitely not his men who also had been instructed to stand down. I believe it was during all of this that it surfaced again on social media that uh, they were men from Bonny Camp that went to the toll plaza. He also testified that in the wake of the violence which occurred on the night, the governor and his team visited the hospitals and saw that most of those who presented for treatment did not have gunshot wounds. We were informed that there were indeed casualties in some of our hospitals in Lagos. We then also started to get information from other parts of Lagos where we, there were still incidents of violence. Now it was uh, escalated into cult and territorial clashes in other places. And uh, the governor then decided that uh, we should maybe go out to see what was going on for ourselves. And we left the government house at about 12.30, and the first place we visited was the General Hospital in Marina. General Hospital in Marina also had 12 patients. Uh, at the time when we were there, 
most of the injuries were all in the nature of cuts, bruises, but nobody at General Hospital said they were shot at. This is the Reddington Hospital in Lekki. Uh, because of the number of emergency uh, people that they had, they had to use the part of the outdoor overfill in uh, the back of the compound as emergency treatment places. And what uh, the medical personnel who were on duty informed us about yellow chip was that the nature of the injuries predominantly were people who had fractures, machete wounds, or minor injuries from maybe falling or tripping over each other. This is uh, not a government-owned hospital. It is a private hospital on Admiralty's map. Further cross-examination will continue on the 26th of June. Shola Shoyeli, Channels Television News. Thank <music> you.